Well, there's a tree between him and that dog. And that dog was on that chain. And so you can imagine what happens. All of a sudden, that dog gets really excited. And he goes by that tree. And he begins to make a circle around the tree, excited to get to Mr. Evans. Well, Mr. Evans looks at him. You know, he's calling to him and stuff. But he's trying to get him to convince him to go the other way. But instead of him doing that, this dog thinks that, you know what, he knows what he's doing. This dog thinks that he knows the direction that he's supposed to go. And so all of a sudden, instead of that dog unleashing itself, that dog began to run in another circle around the tree. And he continues to do that until that dog just begins to go circle after circle after circle. And guess what he begins to do? He begins to get so tangled up next to that tree that he cannot release himself. And now he's tangled up to that tree. And he's got all this rope around him. All of a sudden, that dog that thought he knew exactly what he was supposed to do, that dog that thought, you know what, I'm smarter than this man who's trying to get me to come to him. That dog that thought to himself, you know what, it's my way and I believe I know what's best for me. That dog, after a while, got so tangled up that all it began to do was this. Big old dog. Tied up in the tree. She likes that noise, doesn't she? All right, I know she's like real quiet. Uh, so all of a sudden, what happened? Uh, all of a sudden, this dog just begins to tie itself to that tree and will not let itself go. And all of a sudden, Dr. Evans tries to go up to him and he tries to untangle him. He tries to get him this way and that way. But that dog who once thought that he was smarter, that dog who once thought that he could handle everything, that dog who figured out me what I can do things on my own, all of a sudden, that dog realized, I cannot get myself out of this mess and all I can do is rely on somebody else who can untie me because I am here whimpering in the mess that I made out of what's going on in my life. <coughs> Trust the Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. You know the problem is sometimes dog you and I dog we get all tangled up dog we get all to the point where we're looking and we think to ourselves, I know what's better for myself, dog. I can do things on my own, dog. I got my life together, dog. I don't need anybody else telling me because I can handle it on my own understanding, dog. And so all of a sudden, and little by little, we get one time around and another time around. How do I get in this mess? What is going on? Why did I even think this would work in my life? Why do I keep making the same mistakes over and over again? Why are we as a nation continue to do the same things over and over again? Why are all these things not working out in my life? No. Maybe it's because of the fact, you know what? We think to ourselves our own beastly understanding that we can handle it, that we can take care of it, and that we can do things on our own, and God is up there and sees us. One time around, and another time around, and another time around, till we get to that point where all we can do in the middle of our tangled mess is just, God, I'm so sorry, 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 sorry. God, I messed up, 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 up. God, I know I can't handle this big boom, boom, boom. And that's what we have to do. We can't get out on our own. We can't do it by ourselves. We've got to call out to him. Say, Lord, untangle me. Lord, free me. Lord, set me loose from all this. And you know what? Whether it is a whimper, or whether it's a cry like we heard a little boy earlier, or whether it's just the shout of a little baby who says, you know what, I can't handle it on my own. Or whether it's a grown man who says to the point in his life, that you know what, I can't, I can't do it, God. It's not my will, but it's your will be done. Or whether it's a single girl who's struggled all her life to get things right, she just finally says, God, it's not my will, but your will be done. Whether it's a parent who's struggled with their kids that have gone astray and they just get to the place, they say, you know what, God, it's not my will, but it's your will be done. Whether it's we as a nation who come together and say, you know what, we thought we could do things this way, we thought we could do things that way, we thought we were the ones in control, and we as a nation bow down before an almighty God and say, God, it's not my will, but it's it's your will be done. In the end, it is all about a matter of trust. Can I tell you this morning, do you, do you trust God? Will you trust God with your life? Will you trust God with your past, no matter what it's looked like? Will you trust God with your present, no matter what situations or circumstances you face? Will you trust God with your future and say, God, I rely on you. I believe in you. I want your will for my life. Will you trust, trust God? Welcome to Westside Emmanuel Baptist Church, the church.
church that loves God and loves people. We're in the heart of Bogalusa with Bogalusa on our heart. We look forward to you joining us in person sometime soon as we worship the Lord together.
Revelation, uh, as you do, so, some of you may not have been here this uh, just this last week and, and experienced some of the joy that we had with this rope. Uh, later on, I come to find out that one of our kids said, you know what, last week was, was angry Marcus, is what he, what he claimed it to be. And so, you know, so this morning, um, I, had, uh, I had like jeans on last week, and so I figured, you know what, I'd be more dignified with a suit on this morning, so I won't yell or anything unless you make me, you know, if you, if you cause me to do that, then we may have a different experience. Uh, we did experience last week, when we talked about something, you may be wondering, well, what is this rope all about? And last week, we actually talked about the fact, you know what, that sometimes... You and I, when it comes to the Lord, that we are oftentimes in a tug of war with God. You ever been there? Uh, God puts you one way and you go the other and it's your will versus his will. And so sometimes we have experienced times in life that we just seem to be at war and tugging at God. And then we also look at sometimes in life where, where you are at the end of your rope. And some of you know exactly what that means. To be at that point in life where you're just overwhelmed and you're just exhausted. And it just seems as though what? Uh, that you can't get a break. And so you get to that point in life where you are at your end of the road. Anyone ever experienced a time of tug of war with God? Uh, just want to be honest. Now, let, let's just, the reality is we've all experienced at times that you are in a battle with God. And the reality is that some of you, and I can look at your faces. In fact, look at the people on your road. Look, look at some faces across from you. You may see some folks that are there that may actually be at the end of their road. Uh, you can just tell. They got that little you know, weird glimmer in their eye, that crazy stank face and stuff. So they, you can tell just by looking at them that you know what? There's something going on that they may be at the end of their road. We talked about that. And last week, we talked that the whole focus of the sermon was is that life is actually kind of like this rope where it is the length of it. And our life could be just about this much. We talked about last week that, you know what, when you compare your life and the brevity of your life, the fact that, you know what, life is here today and gone tomorrow, compared to eternity that just goes on and on and on forever. Sometimes we focus so much on this and the temporary, the things that are right now, versus those things that last last forever. And so today, uh, we talked about last week, the fact that, you know what, your life goes on and on forever. But I wonder if we, we forgot to mention something that, you know what, your life not only has a beginning and it has a future, but it even has a past. And today I want you to think about this rope here representing a timeline, a timeline of your life that began a long, long time ago. Uh, anybody remember, what, what is that dinosaur movie? Uh, well, you know, the one that's Land Before Time. Well, you know, if you think about your life, you know, if you had all of that life before you, all of your past, and even before you were ever born, that there is a history, there is something that has gone on in your life that has led you to where you are today. In fact, let's just, get, let's just imagine for a moment the timeline that began a long time ago. We've got like Adam and Eve, and then we've got, uh, we've got Noah, and then we've got Abraham, and then we've got God's chosen people, and then we've got, you know, there's there Moses who's been raised up, and then you've got the uh, people of Israel and slavery. And then you've got all these like prophets and all these folks trying to get out of slavery. And then after a time, you know what? You got uh, things that are going on with the, like the Babylonians and the Assyrians. And some of y'all remember all these stories uh, from back in the day in Bible school. And then you got the prophets, and then you got minor prophets. You've got all of these things that have happened throughout time. You have rulers and kingdoms and all these folks over time. And then all of a sudden, you get to the point where time after time, you get these Romans that are ruling Jerusalem, and as these Romans come along, then they're in power, and then you got these histories and these stories that there's going to come one born of a virgin, and then all of a sudden, you remember the story, we're going to celebrate that pretty soon, we're all of a sudden the baby born in Bethlehem, and that baby that was born in Bethlehem, there he was born, and he was raised three to three years on this earth, he came and he died on the cross, and then he was buried, and then he, he rose again on the third day, and he reigns forever and ever. The, the timeline of the, the past, all of the things that God did, led to one certain point, and that certain point was leading up to Jesus. All the past, God worked it all out to work it up to Jesus. And now in the future, we're looking at the next time that it all leads up to Jesus again. is in the book of Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. When you find that, in all of the Lord and honor of his word, I want you to think, I, I've struggled. I've struggled this past week. If you know what? We finally are done with what? The election. 
It's a fall of the oak. Now, whether it turned out the way that folks wanted it to, or some didn't, and you know, you can look at the news and see that some folks are kind of upset about that. But, you know, the reality is, it's just it's glad that it is over. Uh, now, let's see what else happens in the world. But, but you know, that that is all part of of this little piece right here. That is all part of those little things that won't last forever. So this morning, we want to look at what does last forever. What is the event to come? So Revelation chapter eleven. It says this in verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying this. Whether it is the kingdoms of North Korea, whether it is the kingdoms of America, whether it's kingdoms of Russia, uh, no matter what kingdom you see on the earth. The Bible says in verse 15, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever and ever. The 24 elders, verse 16 says, who sat before God on their thrones, fell on their faces and worshiped God. Fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come. Because you have taken your great power and you reign. The nations were angry and your wrath has come in the time of the dead that they should be judged. And that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, great, small and great. To destroy those who destroy the earth. Let's pray together. Father, this morning as we come, <laughs> war was such a time of uproar in our nation, but, but even as a time of uproar in our own lives. We, we look at this and we, we long for an anchor, we long for stability, we long just for a sense of understanding, not only in our nation, but in our own lives. And so, Father, would you speak truth to us today? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As you're seated this morning, you know what I have noticed that's just so overwhelming to me. But I've noticed that you know what? Not only in our nation, but in having conversations with people day after day and moment after moment, I've noticed as I've talked to folks that there is a lot of upheaval, a lot of things that people are having to just just deal with on a day to day basis. Your life and the things that are going on in your life and the experiences that you have, I realize that some of you are going through stuff right now that you never thought you'd have to deal with. Stuff that are going on in your relationships, things that are going on in your life, things that are going on uh, in, in your future, things that are going on where you're trying to make sense of stuff, things that are going on in your families, things that are going on at your workplace, just a lot of stuff that just seems to be going on in your life and you're torn, you're struggling, you're at war left and right. And so a lot of us experience those times together. Just like little ones may cry out, a lot of us are spending times of crying out as well. We do that. We do that where we look at the stuff that's going on in our lives and we wonder to ourselves, you know what, what, what about the stuff that is in my past or in my present or in my future? What do I understand and how do I deal with all these things? We notice here in this verse in Revelation chapter 11 that there will come a day, there will come a time that history, which is, if you break that down, his story where God is working out all the circumstances of your life, all the things that are going on in our nation, in our world, even in the middle of your craziness, that God is working all of that out for a reason, for a plan that you may not know right now. I don't know if you realize this. Sometimes God works at a different time schedule than you and I like. Anybody ever notice that? Now, sometimes God does things that you and I say, you know what, if I were God, I would have done that totally different. If I were God, things may have changed in my life. If I were this or I were that, it would not be the way it has worked out. But that, my friends, the reality is, is that God still has a plan. In the middle of things that work out, in the middle of things that don't work out, God still has a plan. And all of history, whether it's the history that was before Jesus Christ leading up to him, and even after Jesus Christ was born and raised and lived on the earth and he died and was raised again, even after that time, all of those things are working out together to where Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 says, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever and ever. So the reality is, whether or not this Sunday, the, the Sunday after the election, whether or not Trump would have won or Clinton would have won, probably my message would have been the same thing. Because the reality is, it does not matter who is in the White House, who matters is the one that is sitting on the throne. And he shall reign forever and ever and ever. 
The reality is it doesn't matter who is actually in your house or who is no longer in your house. It doesn't matter what relationships are there or what relationships are not there. It does not matter how you feel or what you think about the way that things should turn out in the world. In the end, God is the one who reigns forever. And in the throne of your life, in the middle of the house of your, your soul, I wonder if he is living and reigning there even today. Is he the king? Is he the God? Is he the one that is in control of your life? I had a great conversation with a buddy of mine this past week who's, who's just struggling in his relationship with God. He's, he's got some disappointments. Things haven't worked out the way that he wanted them to. Things haven't turned out in his life the way that he thought they should. And so he looks at his life with disappointment and anger towards God and, and wondering, God, I know you're possible. I know you can do this. I know you can change this. But why isn't it any different in my life? God, God, I, I want to trust you, but I don't know if you're trustworthy. God, I want to be by your side, but I don't know if you'll not just let me fall flat on my face. And so he's had this struggle with things in his life. Who am I and what shall I become? And, and how do I trust God when I've just seen as though I just don't know if he's really trustworthy? So he's in this struggle. He's in this tug of war in life. And he's wondering, what should I do? And for some of you can relate exactly to that. Times of struggle and pain and, and things that you're just not really sure are going to happen. But you've got to come to a point in your life where you're willing to wave a white flag of surrender. That's what I told my friend. I was like, look, you know, man, you, you've got to just be able and willing to give it all to God and let him work it out. But it is an act of surrender. And some of you are in that middle of that place of craziness and uneasiness and worry. And you're stressing about this and you're stressing about that. And you're wondering to yourself, is God trustworthy? Can I tell you, in the end, the kingdom is our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. He will be God. He will continue to be God. And he can handle your stuff. If he can handle the nations, if he can hold the whole world in his hands, if he can make sure that the sun doesn't get any closer, that the moon stays where it is for our tides and everything else, if God can hold all of this world together, don't you think he can handle your stuff as well? I mean, you know, he, he can handle your business. You are, you are not the only person on the earth that has troubles that just seem like you're right up to here and you're at the end of your road. God has got you. God can handle it. God can take care of your stuff, but you've got to be willing to give it up to the Lord. In the end, everything in life boils down to you trusting God's will for your life. Even if you don't like it. Even if it is uncomfortable. Even if it does not make any sense whatsoever. In the end, you've got to be willing to trust it. You see, the reality is when we look at the book of Revelation, we see that, you know what? In the end, God works it all out. In the end, nations can, can just go crazy and things can happen in our life. Things just go worse to worse to worse. But God still has a plan and he still works it out all together. And that's true not only in Revelation, but it is true in your life. If you are just willing to trust God with everything. Oh, we are some Indian given folk up in here. You remember that? Anybody have a friend who was an Indian gift? Man, I'm going to give you my marble. Hey, I'll let you play my Matchbox car. Hey, man, you know, you're my girlfriend. I mean, you know, you know that. Uh, yeah. uh, well, the reality is we all have experienced times with folks who, who say, you know what, man, uh, you know, you can have this, but what happens as soon as you give it to them, then they want it back. Isn't that what it's called? I'm sure that is totally impolitically correct. And so if you're watching on YouTube today, excuse me for that. Uh, but, you know, uh, but the reality is, the whole idea is that you give something and then you give it right back. You take it right back. And that's how we do it, God, all the time. Lord, I'll give you my life. And things start going really good and we want it back. Why? Because we think we can handle it better than him. God, I'll give you all my trust. But boy, I take it right back. God, I give you all of everything that I have. God, I give you my kids. But oh, and everything's happening, we, we take them back. What happens? We give it, but then we take it back. And the Lord says, I want you to give every single part of my life to the Lord because he deserves it. It is always a struggle. It is a struggle between your will and God's will. And then what Matthew 26 says, do you remember that story where Jesus Christ is getting to about to face the cross, and as he's getting ready to face the cross, what happens all of a sudden is he's getting ready to face the cross. He comes to the most momentum time in Jesus' life where all of a sudden he looks at the Father and he says, Lord, if you can do anything, you can make this cup pass from me. Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. But then Jesus Christ, even himself, had to say these words, but not as I will. Will, but as, as you will. Lord, not my will, but your will be done. See, suddenly you, that is the greatest struggle of your life. 
Lord, it's not about me. It's not about what I want. It is not about what I think is best for my life. In the end, it is all about, God, what do you want for me? What do you desire out of my life? And God, I know that your will is much better than my will. How many of you parents believe that you know a little bit more than your kids? Any parents? All right. How many of your kids think they know more than you? All right, that's most of us, right? And so, but yeah, I, I see that. What's up, Corbin? Good to see you, man. Uh, you know, the reality is uh, I, I have met folks who all of a sudden, they look and they look kids for some reason, even the smart ones, even the ones who are like, you know, pharmacy students or even the ones that are USM, you know, I, I know the, 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 those kids are smart. I mean, they're intelligent. You know, he, 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 even Kate, I mean, you know, I understand that. Uh, you know, I understand, you know, I understand what it's like for them to be brilliant. But the reality is your parents actually do know some things that you don't know. Amen. Can I get an amen from any parent in the building? Uh, you know, the reality is you do that. It's, you know, don't shake your head. She's right there. All right. Uh, you know. <laughs> See, that's how, that shows you how unsmart you are. All right? So you, know, you can't just shake your head while your mom's in the building. But the reality is, when we all go through those times, when you know what, that, that our kids have come to that certain place where they just think that they are smarter than you. And some of us who were kids a long time ago, a long time ago, uh, you may realize that the older you get, it seems like the smarter your parents became. Anybody ever notice that? Uh, you know, just like, you know, when they're, when they're you know, younger at that age, don't look at me like that. Uh, when they're younger like that, they just think to themselves... <laughs> I'm going to beat your head. Uh, you know, when they're younger like that, they just think that they're the smartest thing ever, that they know everything. But then as they get a little older, we get a little wiser, we begin to realize, you know what? Maybe they did know some things that I didn't know. Now, if that's true for parents and their kids, why do we not think that it might even be true for God? That we might come to him and say, you know what, God? God, I think this is the best time for you to do this in my life. And God, I think you should handle it this way. And God, those things that I want and those things that I don't want, I think these are the ways that you should handle that. And we just assume that, you know what, that we know more than God. And the reality is we, we really, truly do not know more than God. You may think you do, and you can try to know more than God. You can try to set it all out there. But in the end, you've got to make a decision. Is it my will, or is it going to be his will? Is it all about me, or is it going to be all about the Lord? That's why I love this verse in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. This is actually Brother Ronald's favorite verse. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says these words. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Anybody ever heard that verse before? You know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Uh, that's what verse 5 says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You know what I noticed this morning? As I'm looking around, while you're sitting down in that pew, I've noticed that none of you are kind of like, you know, just kind of like, you know, you're, you're holding all your weight on your uh, your quads or whatever. You know, you're, you're, you're actually sitting. Some of you are sitting so good that you're just about asleep. You're right at that, you know, this time change. You got you all messed up and stuff. So you, know, you have relaxed. You, you're just in that mode of, you know what, I am, I am comfortable, I am trusting that this pew right here shall hold me up. I, I'm just believing that it is holding me up. You know why you did that? Because it's proven itself over time that, you know what, if I'm going to sit in this pew, then it, it should hold me up. Even with the folks that are on my row, I think I'm okay. Even with the folks sitting next to me, you know what, I, I know they ate some you know, donuts yesterday, but I think we are all okay on this pew. Why? Because it is trustworthy. You, you look at those, it is reliable. And that word trust, that is that whole idea, this word trust in the Lord with all your heart. It is that, you know what, you fully <laughs> lean and rely and put everything into his hands. You're fully saying, I believe, God, that it's your will that's better than my will. I am fully relying on you, no matter what my past says, no matter what has happened along the way in the timeline of my life. I just believe that you are still trustworthy, and I'm going to rely, I'm going to trust, I'm going to fall in, into your hands. I'm going to trust the Lord with all my heart. And then it says, I'm not going to lean on my own understanding. Not going to lean on my own understanding, but in all the ways I'm going to acknowledge God, and I know He's going to direct my paths. Here's what, here's what I did this morning. I, I actually go to church before I come here. One of my favorite pastors in the world is a man by the name of Dr. Tony Evans. So usually Sunday mornings, I'll, uh, I'll listen to Dr. Tony. It'll be my way of having a pastor in my life and having somebody preach to me. And so I just kind of, you know, enjoy that time together. And so all of a sudden, here I am, I'm listening to Dr. Tony Evans, and he tells me a story about his son. His son's name is Anthony. Anthony, while he was in college, decided that he would raise pit bulls. And so Anthony began to raise pit bulls, and so one weekend, Anthony had to take some of those dogs to his daddy's house. He was raising them, he was taking care of them, and so he began to take two of those dogs to his daddy's house. 
But at his daddy's house, they didn't have like a fencing yard and everything. And so what they ended up doing was that they had to have one of those little, you know, rope chain kind of things. And so uh, they had that dog on that chain just so he could run, you know, he's, he just enjoyed that. So he's out there. And so his daddy went outside, Dr. Evans went outside, and when he went outside, he wanted to kind of play with the dog a little bit. Well, there was a tree between him and that dog, and that dog was on that chain. And so you can imagine what happens. All of a sudden, that dog gets really excited, and he goes by that tree, and he begins to make a circle around the tree, excited to get to Mr. Evans. Well, Mr. Evans looks at him, you know, he's calling to him and stuff, but he's trying to get him to convince him to go the other way. But instead of him doing that, this dog thinks that, you know what, he knows what he's doing. This dog thinks that he knows the direction that he's supposed to go. And so all of a sudden, instead of that dog unleashing itself, that dog began to run in another circle around the tree. And he continues to do that until that dog just begins to go circle after circle after circle. And guess what he begins to do? He begins to get so tangled up next to that tree that he cannot release himself. And now he's tangled up to that tree. And he's got all this rope around him. All of a sudden, that dog that thought he knew exactly what he was supposed to do, that dog that thought, you know what, I'm smarter than this man he's trying to get me to come to him, that dog that thought to himself, you know what, it's my way and I believe I know what's best for me, that dog, after a while, got so tangled up that all it began to do was this. Big old dog. Tied up in the tree. She likes that noise, doesn't she? All right, I know she's like real quiet. Uh, so all of a sudden, what happened? Uh, all of a sudden, this dog just begins to tie itself to that tree and will not let itself go. And all of a sudden, Dr. Evans tries to go up to him and he tries to untangle him. He tries to get him this way and that way. But that dog who once thought that he was smarter, that dog who once thought that he could handle everything, that dog who figured out, you know what, I can do things on my own, all of a sudden, that dog realized, I cannot get myself out of this mess and all I can do is rely on somebody else who can untie me because I am here whimpering in the mess that I made out of what's going on in my life. <coughs> Trust the Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. You know the problem is sometimes dog you and I dog we get all tangled up dog we get all to the point where we're looking and we think to ourselves, I know what's better for myself, dog. I can do things on my own, dog. I got my life together, dog. I don't need anybody else telling me because I can handle it on my own understanding, dog. And so all of a sudden, and little by little, we get one time around and another time around. How do I get in this mess? What is going on? Why did I even think this would work in my life? Why do I keep making the same mistakes over and over again? Why are we as a nation continue to do the same things over and over again? Why are all these things not working out in my life? No. Maybe it's because of the fact, you know what? We think to ourselves in our own beastly understanding that we can handle it, that we can take care of it, and that we can do things on our own, and God is up there and sees us. One time around, and another time around, and another time around, till we get to that point where all we can do in the middle of our tangled mess is just, God, I'm so sorry, 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 sorry. God, I messed up, 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 up. God, I know I can't handle this big boom, boom, boom. And that's what we have to do. We can't get out on our own. We can't do it by ourselves. We've got to call out to him. Say, Lord, untangle me. Lord, free me. Lord, set me loose from all this. And you know what? Whether it is a whimper, or whether it's a cry like we heard a little boy earlier, or whether it's just the shout of a little baby who says, you know what, I can't handle it on my own. Or whether it's a grown man who says to the point in his life, that you know what, I can't, I can't do it, God. It's not my will, but it's your will be done. Or whether it's a single girl who's struggled all her life to get things right, she just finally says, God, it's not my will, but your will be done. Whether it's a parent who's struggled with their kids that have gone astray and they just get to the place, they say, you know what, God, it's not my will, but it's your will be done. Whether it's we as a nation who come together and say, you know what, we thought we could do things this way, we thought we could do things that way, we thought we were the ones in control, and we as a nation bow down before an almighty God and say, God, it's not my will, but it's it's your will be done. In the end, it is all about a matter of trust. Can I tell you this morning, do you, do you trust God? Will you trust God with your life? 
Will you trust God with your past, no matter what it's looked like? Will you trust God with your present, no matter what situations or circumstances you face? Will you trust God with your future and say, God, I rely on you. I believe in you. I want your will for my life. Will you trust, trust God? He said, I, I bet you we can do this. I don't know if, I don't know if uh, Brother Wayne would be, be willing to do this or not. But I, I bet you if, if we put him like, you know, on the top of that pew, and then all of a sudden, you know, we get some big guys, like, you know, uh, big guys. I mean, like, real, real big dudes. You know, we'll get, we'll get Casey. Charlie works out some. We'll get Charlie. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll get Stanford as well. Mr. Dillon right behind him. I mean, you know, like, like big dudes. You know, Ryan, he used to enduro and stuff. And so, you know, I'm talking about, like, big dudes. Like, you know, real, real kind of men. I, I imagine if we get all those guys, you know, Brian up here, just kind of line them up and in a straight line. I imagine if he was up on that pew and he closed his eyes, he closed his eyes and then he just held his hands together and then he just jumped up in the air and fell backwards and us guys would be there to catch him. I imagine, Brother Wayland, you would do that, right? You, you would be <laughs> you, you, you'd be willing to, to, to do that, right? Because of your, your okay, never mind. I'll test the Lord. He doesn't test the Lord. But, <laughs> I, I think, brothers, that he doesn't trust us is more what I think that's more what he's saying. You know, the Lord will handle it, but y'all can't handle me. So, uh, but the reality is that that's, that's how we do it oftentimes. The Lord could catch us. The Lord could hold us. The Lord could sustain us. But we have to make a decision. Am I going to do it? Or am I not going to do it? Am I going to allow the Lord to catch me and to hold me up? I'm going to say, no, Lord, not, not today. Not on this one. It's way too big. In the book of Revelation, the nations who conspire against the Lord bow down at his throne. That's great for nations. But I wonder about your life. Would you bow down today to the throne of God and simply say, God, I will Trust you. Would you bow your head for just a moment as Brother Wayland comes and come this time of invitation? I wonder today, friends, are you all tangled up? Do you find yourself in a world of mess? Have you, because you try to rely on your own understanding, just made a circle around the tree of your life and you can do nothing to set yourself free? Well, you know what the, uh, the reality is. The reality is you can find no comfort, you can find no relief, except from the Lord. L listen to the little ones for just a moment. You know why they cry out? The little ones cry out, they talk, they show that they're in need in the only way they know possible. To let you know, hey, I need something. Hey, be by my side. Hey, take care of me. And the Lord says, come to him like a little child. Say, hey, Lord, I need you. I cry out. And I need your help right now. If that's true for a little one, it's true for you. Would you cry out the same way? Lord God, I trust you. I love you. I want you in my life. Father, I do pray today. That folks who are gathered here in this place might come to a place of decision. Whether it's a trial or a circumstance or a relationship or a hardship or years of pain and frustration or shame or regret. Something going on in their life, Lord God, that today you would just allow them to say, I'm trustworthy. I can handle it. I'll be right by your side. And Lord, that they may respond to you and say, Lord, I trust you today. So, Father, we offer up this time of invitation. If there's somebody who needs to give their life to Christ, today would that be the day in their life? If there's someone who needs to recommit, would today be that day in their life? So, I need to come and pray right where they are at the altar today. Would you make that a part of their life as well? Father, we come as a nation begging for your forgiveness, but also as a nation begging for your blessing. But we also do that in our own lives. God, we need you. God, we want to trust you. God, walk with us as we walk from here. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me?
Friends, thank you for joining us today at Westside Emmanuel Baptist Church, the church that loves God and loves people. We hope you'll be able to join us this coming Sunday at 10.30 a.m. or 6 o'clock in the evening time, Wednesdays at 6 o'clock for our prayer service, and we also have youth and children's activities as well. We look forward to seeing you. Hope to meet you in person here in Bogalusa with Bogalusa on our heart. We hope to see you soon.